Hey guys, my name is Ronha VHCM, and I'm here to talk about something most people don't understand, but I think is very interesting. That is the curious case of casual and core games, specifically about how these games make money. If you've ever wondered why you feel like your favorite games kinda hate you, well you might just get the answer in this video. First, we'll go over some terms to make sure we're all on the same page. The only key terms we're going to be using are casual and core. So what do I mean when I use these words? When something is described as casual, it means that people don't want to dedicate a lot of resources into it. Going to a casual party means you can go in your standard outdoors getup, but a less casual one will require you to dress up a little. In relation to video games, time is the specific resource being talked about. Phrases one would associate with casual are time killer, pass the time, or just a happy distraction. Core, on the other hand, is the opposite. If something is described as core, it means that it is integral to or at the center of something. We're going to use it specifically to refer to something that requires dedicating a certain amount of time to it. An example of something that can be described as core would be hobbies. Sure, we might do them for fun, but we also dedicate certain parts of our day to pursue them. Now we'll see how we can distinguish between casual and core games, and also casual and core players. First, we'll differentiate the two kinds of games. Casual games are designed to be played during your spare time. Let's say you're waiting for your doctor's appointment. It's taking a bit long, and you're getting kind of bored. So you pop out your phone, play a quick round of a casual game, and your boredom disappears. Because of this, most casual games are on your phone. They're kind of limited to that. After all, when are we going to want to kill a little bit of time while also being at a computer? Now, another way to identify a casual game is that they usually limit how much you can play. This is intended since the game is designed for incredibly short play sessions. Energy systems or waiting times are abundant in casual games. This is important for later on, so just keep it in mind. Some examples of casual games would be Angry Birds and Candy Crush. Core games, on the other hand, are designed to be played in dedicated play sessions. That means setting aside 1-2 to two hours of your day to be able to play these types of games. This is the kind of game that quote-unquote gamers play. To help illustrate, here's an analogy. Casual games are singing in the shower, while core games are singing at a, at a concert. Unlike casual games, these don't limit the amount of time you can play, and in fact are actually designed to keep you playing for as long as possible. Examples of core games would be League of Legends and Overwatch. Now, let's move on to the players. Okay, this time we'll talk about the core players first. Core players are those that you would describe to be hardcore. They play the game in a competitive manner and they aim to improve over time. Their main drive is to display their skill by showing mastery over the game's mechanics. These types of players are also the ones that play the game the most. If you've ever found yourself looking up tutorials on YouTube about how to become better at a specific game, Chances are you are a core player of that specific game. Now no matter what the game is, be it Cut the Rope or Dark Souls, core players will always be a small minority of the game's overall player base. They may be one of the louder ones, but they are definitely just a vocal minority. Most players fall into the other category, the casual player. Now, the casual player plays the game for some reason other than to become better at the game or for the thrill of competition. Maybe they like the game's aesthetic, maybe they really enjoy the gameplay, or maybe they play to socialize and make friends. They know that they'll never be one of the best at the game, but hey, that's alright. Maybe they'll watch a high level game or two, but it's not so that they can apply to their game, they just want to be entertained. Casual players make up the majority of any game's player base. They'll play the game, 
but they won't get too much into the competitive portion of it. Winning isn't everything, being the best isn't everything. Instead, it's about the experience of playing the game. Now you might think that since casual games are designed for short 5 minute sessions, they would earn money from their casual players, right? While core games would earn money from its core players. But you would be wrong. Casual games actually earn revenue from its core players, while core games earn revenue from its casual players. Now, you might be thinking, why does this happen? Well, to answer that question, we'll have to look at the ways you can actually spend money on each type of game. So, why do core games earn money from casual players? Well, in these games, certain ways of monetization are actually frowned upon. Gamers hate it when you can buy power in a game or use money to be able to speed up game progress. If you put out a multiplayer game where people who spend money are 20% stronger than those who don't, your game is going to get a lot of bad publicity. In fact, any gameplay that is locked behind a paywall in a PvP game with no free way to access it is seen as suicide on the developer's part. You also don't want it because the people who aren't willing to buy the locked content will resent the ones who are willing to, fostering toxicity and destroying a community that the game might have. So, how do these games monetize? Well, they monetize by selling you customization options in the game that change the way your character looks or what the announcer sounds like. They also sell in real life merchandise. Notice how none of these actually help you improve at the game. Instead, these things appeal more to the casual players who care about more than just winning and becoming better. Not only that, but there are also a lot more casual players compared to core players. While a game might be core, it is actually supported by a casual base. Therefore, it makes a lot more sense to create content that appeals more to your casual players rather than to your core players. It'll make developers a lot more money to prioritize the casuals, and then that money can be invested back into the game. So if you're a core player in the game and you feel frustrated that you're not being heard, understand that the only way your needs can be met is if the needs of others are met first. Similarly, casual games are actually supported by a core audience. Let's look into why. So how do casual games monetize? Well, remember how we talked about how casual games specifically limit your playtime? Well, they also give you the option to extend your playtime by paying them money. Now, to the casual player, this isn't very appealing. They don't play the game for that long anyway, so why would they pay for this? But the core player, he plays the game for long sessions. He'll pay that money to be able to play more. But why is it that casual games can get away with this, while core games can't? Well, the people who play casual games and the people who play core games aren't the same people. So none of the same stigmas against these practices are present in casual games, or at least they're not as well heard. This brings me to the main point of this video. While a game is primarily designed for a specific audience, it actually earns money from the other crowd. It's why games sometimes feel like they're not kind to their primary audience, because that's not where the money is. It makes more sense to first attend to the needs of the people who make you money, to ensure that the game survives, and then cater to the needs of the intended audience. There are games that straddle the line between casual and core, and for the most part, they seem to earn revenue from both types of players. Games such as Hearthstone and Clash Royale do this primarily because of the card system. While all you can spend money on are things that grant power, the presence of a deck 
lets people express themselves, which is something the casual player enjoys. Anyway, that's my time. This is Ronha VHCM saying, do what you're good at.